Hello guys, Matthew here and welcome back again to my channel. Yes, I finally have it in my hands, the long-awaited AMD Radeon 7. Yeah, it has 16GB of HBM2 video memory, 3840 stream processors, so on and so forth, but since it's been a while after the initial release date of it, and since everyone else has benchmarked it above and beyond, I've decided not to go too deep into technicalities in this video, as all of that has been covered multiple times, but rather make this video more around the fact what can be done with this card in terms of undervolting it, and overall performance correlation when you start to play around in this area. So let's move on right away and do just that. The Radeon 7 itself is a performance beast, there's no doubt about that. You can see mine results rolling on your screen right as I speak, so feel free to take a look at them if you're still interested up until now. Maybe you are since I use ultra wide resolution in my testing. But much as the Vega 64 and Vega 56, it's what you would say a rare find among users, especially compared to the RX 500 series. Also, just as the aforementioned duo, it benefits greatly when you fiddle with its voltage, curve, power and clock settings. One rather interesting topic and concern came along with the Radeon 7, and that's that it can get pretty loud, hot and power hungry, so I went in to check out what's that all about in person and see what can be done about it. The loud and hot part is basically a chain reaction, and although at first 70 to 75 degrees Celsius of GPU temperature under load at default settings doesn't seem that much, when you count in the fact that that's with a pretty beefy cooler sitting under this outer shell, paired with three 75mm fans running at around 2600 RPM, while also bearing in mind that the edge temperature is the least hot part of the GPU, you could say that it's somewhat challenging to cool off this card, especially since the junction, peak temperature, goes way over 100 degrees Celsius. AMD countered that with the auto undervolting option, which can easily be found in AMD Radeon settings control panel. Basically, you need few mouse clicks to get to it and enable it under gaming, then global settings and then global wadman. Click this auto undervolt option and that's it pretty straightforward. I did that right away, which as you can see here in my direct comparison with this stock out of the box settings, yielded better results. The core voltage was down by 0.06 volts, which meant the GPU was not getting as hot, which meant the fan speed could go down, and it did, by about 100 to 200 RPM in games, even lower in some synthetic benchmarks. The edge GPU temperature was more or less the same compared to the stock figures, roaming around 70 degrees Celsius, but on the other hand, the junction temperature was a couple of degrees lower. What was also interesting to see is that the performance and clock figures went up for a bit, so when you draw the line with using auto undervolt option, you'll get a bit quieter and slightly better performing Radeon 7. But I wasn't here just for that, I wanted to go a step further by incorporating some overclocking into the mix. Here I before all tried to find the right sweet spot between getting that extra performance and not getting too noisy, and although I could ramp up the GPU clock speed to around 1950MHz, it just wasn't worth it of that extra noise, higher temperature and power consumption on account of the necessity to bump up the core voltage some more to reach that point of stability. So as you can see here, I've settled down with these settings. The memory was maxed out and rock stable at 1200MHz, it didn't affect anything else around it, so I had no worries about that, while the 1002mV core voltage and 1909MHz core clock setting resulted in it roaming anywhere from 1850 to around 1930MHz in games, with core voltage being at 1006mV, according to the GPU-Z readings. Yes, I know that I've just read a lot of numbers back to you, but bottom line, I've managed to get even lower core voltage than with auto undervolt option, while also getting higher GPU clock speeds and pulling down the power limit by 5%. The temperatures and the fan speeds were more or less the same compared to the auto undervolting option, maybe just a tad lower fan speeds since I've decided to tone it down a bit, do a manual fan curve based on what I saw in terms of temperature movement under load, as the default fan curve is pretty aggressive. Either way, you'll have to cope with some noise in order to get that extra performance using overclocking. 
After that, I went in for another search, search for what I thought are the best underworld power and clock settings with the goal of lowering down the fan speed, noise and temperatures, all of that while taking a minimal performance hit. In my case and for my sample of Radeon 7, I found that around 900 millivolts of core voltage was ideal, with again maxed out 1200 MHz of video memory speed since it doesn't affect stability of the card, minus 10% on the power limit and core clock speed set at 1740 MHz, which resulted in it being anywhere from around 1700 MHz to even close to 1800 MHz while gaming. Despite the lower clock speeds, the overall performance figures were just a tad lower, but as you can see here, the junction temperature was way below 100 degrees Celsius, even below 90 degrees Celsius, and that's now becoming a decent figure compared to our starting point, while the GPU edge temperature also finally came down below that magic 70 degrees Celsius number. Fan speeds came way down this time, around 1700 to 1800 RPM, which was now really acceptable noise-wise, and that's also with the manually set fan curve from my side. Finally, let me just put everything side by side, all the different profiles and settings I've tried here, their outcomes in terms of GPU temperatures, fan speeds, loudness, power consumption and performance figures in 3D Mark. So you can see for yourself what kind of difference can be achieved by playing around with Radeon 7 Wattman settings. It's nothing complicated, all you basically need is some time out of your day. All in all, this was a very interesting experiment from my side, I really enjoyed it and I might start doing Undervolts as a regular thing within my graphics card reviews, so I will ask you, what do you think about that? Tell me in the comments down below if you like that idea. I hope at least one of you will find this useful as some type of guidance, because as I said before, your outcome can differ depending from sample to sample of graphics card, your usual silicon lottery. That's it for this time from me, thank you once again for watching, toss me a thumbs up if you enjoyed my content, that really helps me a lot, and if you like what you saw, feel free to subscribe, and if you already are, be sure to press that notification bell down below, so you don't miss out on a new video, and until then, catch you later guys!